It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. Hoppy Sees Red. Gloom has settled over the cook shack of the Bar 20 Ranch, thicker than the clouds that hang over the tower and mountains. Nothing Hopalong Cassidy can do or say seems to make a bit of difference to California Carlson. He's just plumb fit to be tied. And who wouldn't feel that way, having the cook walk out and being left with a pile of dirty pans halfway to the ceiling? You fall down, you sidewinding <laughs> pilot here. I'll pick it up, you California. Don't need to. This is the last pan I'm a washing if I never eat again. <laughs> uh, cook walking out with no notice. And what right you got to be smiling, hop along, Cassie? I was just waiting for you to run down. I told you when you hired that clam Hodgins that he'd up and quit. <laughs> Mooning around all the time after that gal in town. Oh, Emmy's a fine girl, California. And if Clem could get his feet on the ground, they'd make a mighty fine young couple. Uh, he's a lazy, no good for nothing, ungrateful. Shh. He's coming back. I know what you're thinking, Mr. Cassidy. But like I told you, working for day wages ain't getting me any place. Got uh, something else in mind, Clem? Sure have. I'm getting me a big spread like yours. Plenty of water and plenty of grazing. Yeah? And what are you going to use for money? I got that planned out, too. Look, Clem, your pa was the best friend I ever had. When I really needed one, I'd like to be your friend, too. I know. Well, the claim your pa left would bring in something. Not fast enough. I gotta do something quick. Earl Chapel is taking out gold right next to your claim. Earl's a miner. I'm a cattleman. Get yourself a job riding stage. That pays good. Yeah. The only hombre making anything out of the stage is the gunsel who held it up twice. The one they ain't caught. But they will. And whoever catches them will get a nice reward. Some fellas don't mind being bossed around, but I'm sick of it. I'm getting my own spread, and I'm getting it quick. I don't like to hear you talk that way, Clem. Mm, a feller gets his mind on the wrong track, and he's bound to get in trouble. Well, that's the way you feel about it. Maybe you better look under my coat. Maybe I'm stealing one of your yearlings. <laughs> oh, come on, Clem. Let's not part company that way. You just remember your job's always waiting for you. Well, that's right nice of you. But I'm striking out for myself. If my plan works out, I'll be owning one of these spreads right pronto. Well, so long. Much obliged for everything, Mr. Cassidy. And I'll leave them pans as a present from me to you, California. Why, that ungrateful little pup. Why, California, I... hold it. Uh, uh, forget the pan. Uh, forget them? Yeah, forget them. Let's saddle up. I got a feeling Clem's going to need help, and right soon. Well, you think he's heading for trouble? There's only two trails he can take, California. The honest one and the other. Uh, the other? Yeah. The other trail ends at Boot Hill or on the end of a noose. I hope I'm wrong, but I see some mighty strong indication that that's the trail Clem's taken. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Sees Red. Clem Hodgins, son of one of Hopalong Cassidy's best friends, has quit his job at the Bar 20 Ranch to get enough money to buy his own ranch. He didn't explain how he was getting the money, just that he'd get it. He rode off the ranch into town and stopped at the home of Emmy Purcell. Hi, Emmy. Clem, what are you doing in town? Can I come in a minute? Of course you can thought you wouldn't come to town till Sunday. Mr. Cassidy let you go for the day? I ain't working for Cassidy anymore. You what? You mean you quit your job again? I knew you'd spot off, Emmy, but, but I just made up my mind. 
I ain't getting anywhere on day wages. Clem Hodgins, after Mr. Cassidy was good enough... Now, to... don't you go giving me any more lectures. I know what I'm doing. And I know what I'm doing, too. Now, wait, Emmy. Don't say we're quits until you hear me out. I got other plans for us. There ain't any other plan except work, and you know it. I'm going to have a big spread. Lots of grays and lots of water. Well, you might as well know, Clem. There ain't no denying I'm in love with you, but I can't live my life out with a man who won't work. Just give me a little more time, Emmy. I'll prove I know what I'm doing. Why don't you work your mind like Earl is doing? He's taking out gold every week. Too slow. I ain't a miner, Emmy. I'm a cattleman. Oh, we'll say no more about it for now. Good afternoon, Emmy. May I come in? Why, sure, Earl. Come on, Clem's here. Hi, Earl. Hi, Clem. Glad to see you. Didn't expect you till Sunday. I quit. Oh, Yes, you know what you're doing. But uh, how about working with me at the mine? Why, I got other plans. Sit down, Earl. Oh, I can't stay, Emmy. I just saw Clem's horse outside. I got to get over to the Fargo office, shipping out $3,000 of gold dust to Denver. Why, Earl, that's good. Seven weeks' work, but it's worth it. Uh, I don't quite know how to say this, Clem, but if you could use it to get started, you're welcome to it. Oh, Earl. You don't mean it, Emmy. It's just showing off. Clem. Is that any way to talk to your pal? Well, is this any way for you to talk to your intended? I ain't married to you yet, Clem Hodgins. Not yet. See Jake Miller anywhere in California? Nope. It's so darn much smoke, I, I can't see ten feet. Oh, wait, I see him. He's coming this way. A yeah, fine way to run a Fargo office. <laughs> I have to look for the agent in the saloon. <laughs> hey, well, how are you? Ain't seen you for a month. You're just a feller I'm looking for. Uh, I'm looking for you, too, Jake. You are? What for? Better come outside. The smoke's too thick in here. <clears throat> oh, whoa. Oh. What you want to see me about, Hoppy? Wanted to know if package came from me on the stage this morning. Uh, nope, nary a thing. Hey, but I was just wondering if you'd help me a bit. Well, I don't know. Uh, you know anybody high up in the Fargo Company? No, guess not. Why? Uh, well, uh, these word that they're going to cut out this year, stop and go by the way of Rocky Point on account of the holdups we had near here. Why, it'll leave me without a job. I see. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I guess I can tell you this, Hoppy. Uh, there's another shipment going out this afternoon, and I'm scared it'll leak out. Well, i got to go over the store of the list, and I'll stop by the Fargo office and see what we can work out. Oh, darn it, I just know you do something. I feel better already. <laughs> see you in ten minutes, Jake. I'll be waiting for you, Hoppy. Hey, you know, Hoppy, he'll be here watching. There's something funny about that feller. Funny? Yep. Them watery eyes. He's as phony as a 35-cent sapphire. You mean you're just now figuring that out? Well, what can I do for you, Clem Hodgins? I'd like to kind of square up and pay my grub debt, Sarah. You hear that, Will? Now, there's an honest man. <laughs> sure like to look at one up close, like. Clem, you know Will Tudor. Drives the stage for Jake. Oh, oh, yeah. Howdy. Howdy. Well, how much owe you, Sarah? Now, let's see, Clem. There was that Saturday. Uh, before you start figuring that, Sarah, can you get these things together? Huh? Some cowpoke just give me this list here, asking if I'd drop off the grub to the Widow Plumber's ranch. I don't mind helping out, but doggone it, it's two miles off the stage road. Well, you can't expect me to fetch them out there. Well, I'll deliver them for you, Sarah. Well, sir, now you made yourself a deal, Clem. Sure don't want nobody to go hungry. Well, got to be getting back to the stage depot. Oh, have a good trip, Will. Sure hope to. Yeah. Just take me a minute to get these things together. Uh, team's hitched to the spring wagon out back, Clem. And, and watch out for the G-horse. He's flyer than a yearling. He don't worry me none. Well, uh, here it is. Beans, flour, bacon, and sugar. Uh, got him. Well, I'm there in no time. You figure on my bill while I'm taking these. Uh, maybe better wait till the stage is gone. Don't worry, I'll beat the stage over the pass. You're sure in a powerful hurry. Let me see. 
Jing on last month. Clem got two in the backer, and he was already our own. Well, if it ain't hop along and California howdy, boy. Hello, Sarah. You gotta get a pile of groceries. I'm sure glad to see you come in, California. Yeah. I got something for you. <laughs> it isn't some more crackers with coal oil on them, is it, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. Hmm. Uh, what is it? It's jelly beans. Look at it. Jelly beans. <laughs> well, bless your sweet little heart, Sarah. Hello, copy. Red ones, black ones, green one. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, Sarah, wasn't that Clem Hodgins who went out the back door a minute ago? Yes, it were what? Well, what's his hurry? Oh, he offered to deliver some groceries out the post road for me and... Post road? Uh, yeah. Is there anything wrong? No, I guess not. I told him to wait till the stage went out in that narrow pass, but he wouldn't wait. It's doggone funny. He ain't got nothing else to do. He, he, he could have waited. Uh, Sarah, here's the list. We'll be back later and pick him up. What's your hurry? I just thought of something. I promised Jake I'd see him at the Fargo office. Uh, sure, and you plum forgot it, Hoppy. My goodness, you act like your life depended on it. Uh, life might depend on this, Sarah, but not mine. Hope we're not too late, California. Uh, too late for what? Hope the stage hasn't left yet. Maybe it should. Nope, it's side of the Fargo office, still here. Good. Let's get in the office and see Jake right away. Be right with you, Hoppy. We'll wait, Jake. Well, didn't notice you come in, Mr. Cassidy. How are you? Fine, Earl. How are things working out at the mine? Well, fair. Making a little steak now and then. Better than a lot of them are doing. Yeah, I guess so. Sending 3000 out to Denver today. Good. But you almost missed the stage with it. Did it on purpose. Waited till the last minute so no one would know beforehand. Hey, here you are. Here's your receipt, Earl. All signed proper. Oh, thanks. Let's hope it gets through this time. I ain't nobody knows going aboard, Earl, so help me. Well, that's the way it should be. Well, glad I saw you, Hoppy. Same here, Earl. Good luck. Thanks. I guess I have been pretty lucky with everything. There, now, now, you see, Hoppy, he, he says I talk too much, and look at them there fellers lounging in front of the bar, uh, seeing him come in with the package and knowing what it is and seeing him go out without it. Well, maybe we can save your job, Jake, and save somebody else a lot of trouble if my plan works. Plan? Uh, what is it, Hoppy? Uh, it's kind of simple. Like you say, you have to do something. <laughs> like everything went off without a hitch. I wouldn't say that, California. What? Well, what are you looking down the road for? Ryder coming into town, beating the dust. Hey, he sure is. Riding like a twister's after him. That Ryder's bringing news, California. Let's stop him. Right. Uh, cowboy! Hey, watch up! Uh, we're Sheriff Turlock! What happened? Stage held up! Get a posse! Oh, what do you say, Hoppy? Looks like something went wrong with our plan, Jake. Oh, I was appeared at just this very thing. Reckon I'll find a sheriff. Now, don't go feeling bad, Hoppy. You done the best you could. Hop along. Hey, Hoppy. Hey, it's Sarah from the store. What's wrong, Sarah? Oh, Hoppy, the horse has just run in the back of the store with a spring wagon. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, don't you see? Clem Hodgins ain't on the wagon. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy Sees Red. Clem Hodgins has quit his job as cook at the Bar 20. He wants a big spread, lots of cattle and lots of grazing, but he hasn't told anyone how he's going to raise the money. Clem hurried out the stage road an hour ago, and now word comes that the stage has again been held up. The wagon came back to town, but without Clem. Sheriff, I can prove that Clem didn't touch a grain of that gold. You can prove it when he's locked up. I'm going out to his cabin and bring him in. Now, how could Clem steal something that wasn't out in the stage? What? California's right. There wasn't a smidgen of gold on the stage. You sure of that? Dead sure, Sheriff. Dick Miller was afraid this had happened, so he didn't ship the gold like we planned it. Well, the attempt was made. Uh, here's Clem's cabin. Oh, oh Topper. Oh, oh, boy. Uh, 
I come to take you, Clem Hawkins. Don't give me no trouble. Hmm. Clem isn't here. Mm, like he's not lit out. Uh, what you expecting to find, Sheriff? Gold. If a feller's dumb enough to do what he done, he's dumb enough to cash it away in a hurry. A uh, feller ain't carrying that stage box around with him. Mm, this might be here somewhere. Ah, mm. uh, you're wasting time, Sheriff, looking in cupboards. I tell you, there's no gold on that stage. Another so thing. Hold your tongue, Cassidy. You're wrong. If this ain't gold in this pouch, I'm a nester. What? Let's see it, Sheriff. Uh, look. Hands full of it. Now, what do you say, Cassidy? <laughs> Don't look like Jake played along with you. Clem! What are you doing in my cabin? Reach, Clem. No funny stuff. I'll take that shooting iron. Get out of my house, all of you. The horses and wagon came back to the store, Clem. I don't care if they're running the river. That brunt got scared of a rattle and run off the trail. Throwed me out, and I've been walking back. You don't need to walk no further. You're riding the rest of the way, Clem. For what? For holding up the stage. Well, Emmy, Earl, what do you want? I come to see Clem. Any seeing him will be right behind bars, because that's where he's staying. Uh, could I have a word with you, Sheriff? Sure, I'll have a word with you. But if it's regarding Clem, it's time wasted. Go on in, Emmy. See him while you can. Someone to see you, Clem. I don't want to see nobody. Clem, I just come to hear you tell me you didn't do it. You couldn't do a thing like that. Ain't much use in talking now, Emmy. Seeing you like this... Here and you say my name, I, I could never believe it. Even if they send your way, I'll wait till you get back. Best forget it, Emmy. If they send me away for something I didn't do, it, I ain't going to be no good to anybody if I come back. Yeah, come on in, Jake. Hello, Jake. Well, I'll be in California. Say, this is a regular meeting. I'd just like to have you answer a few things, Jake. Nah, you look here, Sheriff. Hoppy knows I ain't mixed up in this. No one said you were. Well, I should think not. After all, it was your idea in the first place. Oh, why didn't you follow Hoppy's idea? Yeah, why did you change our plan? Well, I... Me? J change plans? What? What are you talking about? <clears throat> if you don't mind, gents, I'm the law around here, and I'll be asking the questions. Hoppy says you'd plan not to ship gold on that stage. Darn right, that, that's what I planned, and that's what I done. You mean no gold was shipped? No, sir, an area pinch. Well, I'll be. Don't make no sense. A hole up where there ain't no gold stolen, but still we find the stolen gold in a feller's cabin. The same gold it's supposed to not be sent. Sheriff, if you think I'm lying, I'll go get the package. Well, go on and get back here pronto. Uh, back in five minutes. Uh, that might answer one of the questions. And if it does, then we got to get the answer to where Clem got the gold we found in his cabin. Well, maybe from his mine. Oh, he ain't worked an hour in them diggings. And nobody's given anybody a pouch of that stuff. Uh, nice work, Sheriff. I hear you got the vomit that held up my stage. Uh, come on in, Will. We want the details of what happened. Well, from what the boys say, you caught Clem red-handed. I wish we were as sure as you are, Will. Meaning what for that remark, Cassidy? Settle yourself there, Will. Let's have the story. Well, just like the other times, about three miles out, going through them crags, fellas stepped out in the trail and threw down on me. Nothing I could do. Did he say anything? Didn't hear nothing. He had a blue handkerchief over his face. You know Clem Hodgins. Was it him? I couldn't rightly say. Looked about his size. Well, that's not much help, Sheriff. Wait. Hold on a minute. I just thought of something. After I threw down the pouch, this gunsel waved me out. I'd gone about 30 rods when I seen a spring wagon pulled off the trail, kind of hidden the mesquite and rocks. A uh, spring wagon? Go on, Will. It looked like a wagon I'd seen lots of times down to the general store. Old, dust color, broken seat. Uh, California, it's getting kind of late. I think we'd better get things finished up. I'll write a list of what I want at the store, and you get the note to Sarah right away. Oh, darn it, Hoppy, she's got the list. Not this list. Will, 
Did you know there was gold on that stage? Well, of course, the pouch was locked up. No way of telling. Here, California, give Sarah this note and hurry while the store's still open. Okay, Harvey. Uh, I won't be going long. Wait here for me. Right. Well, I guess I told you everything, Sheriff. I'm going to go down to the brass knob now and get some vittles. I'll be right back. Yeah, I guess things is pretty settled now. No more when Jake gets back. Yeah, if he gets back. What do you mean by that, Hoppy? Just thinking out loud, Sheriff. Sorry. Uh, Will, I'll walk down with you and get a bite to eat. Fella hates to eat alone. Don't need to come on my account. I like eating alone. I thought maybe you and I could talk while you eat. Well, I guess there's no law against it. Oh, I almost forgot, Sheriff. If uh, California comes back before I do, tell him to meet me at the Brass Knob. I may be needing him. <laughs> For the last time, Cassidy, I tell you, it was that dirty old dusty wagon with a broken seat. Belongs to the general store. I guess I recognize it. That's the same story you told the chair. Of course it is. Now I'm a-going. I've been arguing with you for an hour. Uh, it's been worth it. it. Took a neck right out of a noose. Neck? But I don't see how my story's helping Clem Hodgins none. That's where you're wrong. What are you looking out the back window for? Come here, Will. Look out this window. You can see the back of the grocery store from here. What if you can? Nothing I want to see over there. I think there is. Look. There's the store wagon. No. It can't be. I'm going local. Bright red. Yeah, the general store has a red wagon. Not a dirty, dusty-colored-looking wagon like you said. Well, I'm sticking to my story. It ain't no affair of yours, Cass. It's a mighty important affair of yours, Will. Now look here, Will. Tudor, quit bumping people around. Hoppy, what's wrong with Will? Like to knock me down. He seen a ghost or something? Yeah, a red ghost. Come on, California. We got a lot of work to do fast. Now I know for sure who held up the stage. Are you going to get him? No, I'm following Will Tudor. But we got to get where he's going before he does. Oh, you know who done it, Hoppy? Known for several hours, but a confession is the only way we can pin it on him. Well, then what's our hurry? Because you can't get a confession from a dead man. I'm here to settle a score with you, you double-crossing swine. Telling me wrong about the wagon. Having me say it was dust-colored when all the time it was red. I didn't want to do it in the first place, and now we're caught. Well, what do you got to say? Don't you reach for that gun, I'll... Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. Drop that gun, old chap. I'll drop it. You winged him, Hoppy. Come on. Oh. Why did you have to... Why did I wing you, Earl? Because I don't want to be in the same condition as Will Tudor. He, he's done for, Hoppy. Yeah. Well, Will came here and acted like a madman. He threatened me. I had to do it. I'll save your strength, Earl. You're going to need it when you get back to town. To explain why you and Will Tudor framed Clem Hodgins. Mr. Cassidy, I'm happier than i ever been. Clem promised me he'd go to work. Well, yeah, but Clem, how come you were so all hard anxious to get out on that stage trail? That was mighty suspicious. Well, folks would laugh at me if I told them I was going to try to get the reward from the capture of the gunman. Well, that's what I had in mind. Whatever made you think Earl did it, Mr. Cassidy? Well, it was simple. We didn't ship the gold, but it was found in Clem's cabin. Earl had Will Tudor push the pouch off somewhere in the brush where it wouldn't be found. Took a small bag of gold and hid it in Clem's cabin. But why would he do that to Clem, his best friend? He had lots to gain. His mind came up against Hard Rock, so he's been tunneling into Clem's mind. Then, of course, with Clem gone, Emmy would need protection. Earl's protection. Well, she won't need it anymore, Mr. Cassidy. And if my cook's job is still open, say the word. Oh, that, my friend, is the best news yet. <laughs> California means that, Clem. But what I can't understand, 
What made two of the stage drivers spill the beans? Ah, oh, your story was too perfect. It had to be broken down. But how did you do it? Oh, long yesterday, I could just skin you alive. Ah, <laughs> now, what's wrong, sir? Well, I got that dirt note you sent me. And she done what you told her? Yep, I did. I done what you told me. But answer this. Answer what, sir? How am I going to get this darn red paint off of my head? <laughs> <laughs> And so an exciting adventure ends for Hoppy in California. They'll get back to the Bar 20 just about roundup time and settle down to a peaceful ranch life. But we've a hankering it won't last for very long. Somewhere there'll be trouble, and that's when Hoppy will ride out into another dangerous escapade. Hopalo and Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Hoppy Sees Red was written by Howard Swart. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>